Man, and the only thing she could use was prayer to help her out. Y'all going to stay with me for about 15 minutes? Amen. The Bible says in, in Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Son of David, my daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, Help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and give it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, Great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Jesus met a desperate heathen woman with a child whom the Bible says was vexed sorely by a demon. I don't know if you ever had a child had some issue that you weren't able to help with. Maybe the child was sick or maybe the child was just bad. I mean, had a... <laughs> behavioral challenges <laughs> or maybe the child was somewhere on the spectrum you just didn't know what to do with your child well, can you imagine this woman this this heathen woman this, this Canaanite woman this woman whom Mark calls a Syrophoenician woman. She was not a Hebrew. She was not a Jew. She was on the list of folk who couldn't come close. She would have been walled out of the kingdom. She would have been on the no-fly list. She was a heathen woman. She was a part of a group of people whom the Bible says God, Yahweh himself, had told the children of Israel to go in and utterly destroy their land. This, this heathen woman, there she is, hearing about Jesus. Y'all don't mind, I just, I got a lot of notes uh, uh, but I'm just going to talk to you a little bit today. This this heathen woman, <clears throat> she she hears Jesus is coming by. Uh huh. She makes sure she gets there. Now, prior to this, Jesus was in a place called Galilee about 25 to 50 miles south of where she is. And he'd been talking to a whole lot of good religious folk, talking to them about what it means to be clean and unclean, and telling them that blind folk can't lead blind folk. And his disciples came to him and said, Master, you, you have offended the Pharisees. 
Don't you think you ought to say something nice to these Pharisees? Jesus says to his disciples, every tree which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. I find it very interesting that he reserves his harshest words for the experts in the law. He reserves uh, his harshest critique for those who were of the stock of Abraham, those who didn't need to be grafted in because they were the chosen of God. He tells the heathen folk, the unheathen folk, the, the clean folk, that you're unclean. And so now he finds himself not in Galilee, but in a place called Tyre and Sidon. Now, Tyre and Sidon are not Jewish places. Tyre and Sidon are heathen places. Uh, places where they don't serve Yahweh. Places where they are, are, are pagans, where they uh, worship idols. And this woman, this woman whose child had a demon, the Bible uh, says uh, that he was, she was sorely vexed with a demon. The Greek says she was evilly demonized. That, that's something, and we don't know if she was fully possessed or whether or not she had been touched by a demon or whether or not this was some type of metaphor for she had been sexually abused. We don't know. We just know the scripture says she had been evilly demonized. And the mama couldn't do nothing with her. And so this woman finds herself in a real desperate situation. So here's what the Bible says in verse number 22 of Matthew 15. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried to him. Now I'm going to tell you right now, the reason Jesus is in, is in uh, this, this land of, of Tyre and Sidon is because he's going there to see this woman. Jesus is positioning himself to see this woman who had this child that she could do nothing with. And so hear what she says. The Bible says, and behold, a woman of Cayman came from that region and cried to him. This word cry means to scream with fervor, saying, Master, have mercy on me, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. She's crying to him, this heathen woman. But I want you to notice what she says. She says, oh, Lord, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. I want you to notice something, uh, what she calls Jesus. She, she calls Jesus a son of David. You know, ain't it funny that when folk want something from, from the Lord, they can get all fancy with him? That's a heathen woman. You know, any other time, I don't know if I can make it or not. I'm too busy. But glory to God, when you have problems, oh, Lord, thou son of David. But notice she says, have mercy on me, now the glory to God. I want you to know she didn't say have mercy on my daughter. And you say, well, I don't understand that because you ain't never had no bad. I mean, you ain't have no. <laughs> you ain't have no <laughs> had no challenging children. And every now and then you need mercy on you. But let's say let's say this was a well-mannered child that was just so messed up by this demon that the mama didn't know what to do. And she said, Lord, just help me here. Anybody ever been there? Well, you just need the Lord to help you. you listen, you, and you already know I ain't been the best Christian. I'm a heathen. Oh, God, God don't put on your front little faces. Now you know you know you heathen. I know you. I'm a heathen. I drink and I smoke. <laughs> I sleep around. I'm a heathen. I come to church when it fits my schedule. I usually come late. 
<laughs> I'm a heathen. I got issues. If you come at me wrong, I will cuss you out. Yeah, yeah, I I'll slap the taste out your mouth. <laughs> I'm a heathen. I don't come to you having anything good to offer you. I can't come to you saying I'm, I'm on the usher board or I'm, I'm the head this or I'm the head that or, or I did all. No, 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 I'm a heathen. But I don't care about all that. God, can you just help me? Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. I want you to know what Jesus said to this woman in this desperate situation. I want you to hear what the Lord said. Nothing. See, sometimes the silence of Jesus is deafening. You ask God to help you out, and you say, Lord, help me, and nothing. You say, God, don't you see me down here hurting? Nothing. Can't you tell I got issues and my house is all jacked up? Lord, don't you love me? Nothing. In this desperate situation, and it was so desperate because she had a lot of problems. She had a racial problem. I know y'all ain't never had a racial problem, yeah. Y'all ain't never been persecuted because of y'all race. I understand that because we live in post-racial America. So I, I, I understand that. Uh, but back when I was growing up, yeah, we had racial problems. Uh-huh. But, but not only did she have racial problems. Yeah, yeah. She also had rejection issues. She went to God. God said nothing. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. Y'all understand. It gets better. God said nothing. Guess what the disciples said? Yo, you please just send her away. She ought to make all this noise, disrupting our service. We're here to worship Jesus. We ain't got time for all this heathen stuff. You know, it's a trip how church folk do folk. Just like the disciples, we, we default to send them away. She's in a situation that's so desperate. She's help, asking for some help. But she was determined. I want you to hear this woman. Watch her. The Bible says in verse number, uh, let's go back to her desperation. Uh, in verse number uh, 24, after the disciples said that, I want you to notice how deeper her, her re rejection gets. But he answered and said, I wasn't sent to these lost sheep anyway. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for Israel, not for y'all. What you, what you were talking to me, huh? He undefined her. The Lord. I'm here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not Canaanites. I ain't got no time for y'all nights. <laughs> so y'all just worldly. It's how worldly y'all are. <laughs> I ain't got no time for y'all Canaanites. I, I didn't. And you just start to think, well, Lord, why are you here? You were, you were in Galilee. You walked 25 to 50 miles to get here. But you ain't here for me. What's going on here? See, so sometimes in your deep desperation, you get to you need to get to the point where you understand how desperate your situation actually is. See, because often until you we understand how desperate our stuff is, we don't really pray. We just go into a, a, a psychological manipulation of the Almighty. 
We just try to get God to do what we want him to do. <laughs> we don't understand how deep our need is. But I want to tell you something here, beloved. No matter how bad it gets, don't ever give up. Can somebody say don't give up? I see this woman was determined. I want you to notice what happens here next. The Bible says, verse 25, then Jesus said in verse 24, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25, then, I want you to watch this now. He answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him. Worship, not praised him. She came and proskuneoed him. She worshipped him. The idea of worship is the idea of putting yourself under something greater than you. Worship is what a dog does to the master. Worship, a dog is a worshiper. When you come to the door, I can't wait to see you. I'm glad you're here. Come on, can, can I just have your hand? Just, just, can, I just, come, please, just let me, can I please just let me get it? Come on. That's worship. That's worship. And I'm afraid that oftentimes, sometimes we as believers never really get to the place where we worship. We don't really worship. We go through forms and functions, but we don't really worship. We sing songs and, and pray prayers and, and, and eat crackers and, and drink juice, but sometimes we don't worship. And you can't connect to the Almighty until you worship. Because the nature of the relationship between the creator and the created is worship. Oh God. See, when you come before the creator, you come to understand I am before someone higher than me without whom I would not exist. So she came and worshipped. Well, shouldn't she have been mad? Shouldn't she have been upset? I put myself out here in front of these old stuck-up Christians. I'm crying and roll out on the floor. Talking about help me with my child. And they talking about sin, I go home. What you here for? And word, you going to say you didn't even come here for me? But that's not what she did. And the reason she didn't is because she was determined. See, desperation breeds determination. When you get desperate enough, let me tell you one of the things I was taught uh, in, in financial planning. Uh, it reminds me of uh, Alice in Wonderland. Alice said, I give myself very good advice, but very seldom do I follow it. <laughs> so let me tell you what I learned. <laughs> so one of the problems with our financial situation is we never get mad enough at being broke. Because we don't mind being broke. As, as long as we can have an extra Snickers, we, we, we don't mind being broke. We don't mind being broke. We, oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Uh, 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 David Bach calls it Starbucks money. Yeah, D David David said just give up Starbucks and you could, you could almost uh, a retire millionaire. $3 a day. Times five times or five days a week. That's $15 a week. Times four, that's $60 a month. If you took that $60 a month and, and put it in the interest-bearing account, and didn't touch it for 30 years, you'd have by $750,000. But we're not mad about being broke. I got to have my Starbucks. We don't, it's because, here's the reason, we don't understand how desperate our situation is. Because if we were, desperation would breed determination. All of a sudden, our behavior would, would follow our belief. Are y'all following this? Because once you show enough really believe, your behavior follows. And that's what brought about her determination. And here's what she says. She went, goes and worships him. And she, I want you to watch she, she drops all pretense. 
She dropped all the fancy stuff. She dropped all the have mercy on me, all our son of David. She, she dropped all of that. Lord, will you help me? And you say, well, she still called him Lord. Well, you don't understand. She, she was a heathen. Lord just meant sir. Sir. Come on, man. Will you just help me? That's prayer. Once you get past all the fluff and get down to the real, that's prayer. And you can very seldom get there until you understand how desperate your situation is. So she said, and watch it. She said, okay. All right. You would think, well, you know, Lord, Lord's heart will be moved. Then. But he answered and said, uh, all right, you know it's not good to get a kid's bread to the dogs. I don't know what, <laughs> and I, so I, know, I know a lot of y'all having a Queen Latifah moment right now. Yeah. <laughs> Who you call? I know, I, I, know, I know some of y'all right now having a tea queen. <laughs> I know right now a lot of y'all having that. It ain't right. Put it again to the dogs. Because see, in their culture, the dogs, the little puppies would live inside. And they would run around on, on the floor. And, and, and he's not talking about wild dogs. He's just talking about dog dogs, uh, little puppies. And, and when, 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 when folk would just, they would brush off stuff, and the puppies would eat it. And, and, and he says, I'm not going to get a meal to the puppies. Now, a lot of y'all right now have already left the church. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you have to have determination to come boldly. She said, she said, can I tell you all this right quick? Listen, if you're going to help me, you can call me a dog. Then I'm going to be a dog then. Oh, no, no, no. Because I can see you in your spiritual mind right now. Your head is doing like this. Don't be calling me no dog. I got you, dog. I, I can see you right now. I ain't you, dog. Oh, I, I know what you're doing right now. I ain't. You ain't desperate enough. See, you're under the illusion that you still got something. You're on the illusion of control that I can really handle this. I, I just need a little, Lord, if you just give me a little bit, you ain't got to be calling me a dog and stuff. Well, if I got to go through all that, I don't need your little help. That's where you don't get his little help. Because all she wanted was a little help. She said, yeah, yeah, Lord, I get that. I get that, Lord. Because when you're in a place of worship, you're in a place of undefining yourself. And you become consumed in the presence of the almighty God. Because when you get close to God, I mean, showing up for real close to God, you can't stand close to God and not feel ashamed of yourself. Because I don't care how fine you are, you ain't as fine as God. And when you stand next to God, every little creak, every little crack, every little bulge, amen, every little extra pound, you got glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. It shows up every blemish because God is perfect. Everything you've done wrong, said wrong. Comes up, comes to the surface, and you just, you in this place. God, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah, Lord. But I ain't going to leave it till you bless me. So, so I understand. I, I understand. But even dogs, even dogs get the crumbs. That fall from the master's table. Heard a preacher talking about this the other day. And I, I, I ain't even try to do what he did because he was just amazing. I, was, I listened to like five or six different. And I listened to this one T.D. Jakes. He was talking about the chemistry of crumbs. <laughs> I ain't even going to try it because it was amazing. <laughs> but. But he went through this whole litany about what it takes to make a beautiful five-taste pound cake. He talked about the almond extract and the lemon extract and the this and the that and, the, and how much butter you need. He, you know, he, I mean, he just breaking. He said, y'all didn't think I could cook it. He's just breaking it down. Y'all need to get your recipe. Amen. Just, <laughs> but 
just, he just, he just put it, he just, and, he, and he bring it down. He said, he said, he says, and everybody in the house wants it, and everybody wants a piece of that. He said, he said, but let me tell you something about the crumbs. He says, if you take the crumbs to a chemist, everything that made the cake. And so when she says, Lord, if you just give me the crumbs, I ain't got to sit at the table. I, I don't got to be all fancy. I, you ain't got to call my name. If you just give me the crumbs, I ain't got to be your favorite child. I ain't got to look as good or sound as good. If you can just give me the crumbs. Because this is my priority. People don't understand. See, the text, she's actually asking for seconds. I know you got to do first, but... You, can I be second? God, God, God come on. I know you got to bless Matt, but after you finish blessing Matt. God, I know he's your special. He's your favorite. I, I get that. God, and I know he's got to go first because he's your favorite. But God, whatever you got left. Matter of fact, I can take the secondary blessing. You can bless him with it first and whatever fall off his hands. God, can I just? See, that's what brought her deliverance. That's what brought her deliverance. Hear what the Bible says. The Bible says, uh, y'all still with me? And she said, uh, then Jesus answered and said, O woman, great is your faith. Let it to be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Jesus only used this term great faith twice in Scripture. And both times it was Gentile. When he talked to the centurion who had come to him and said, Lord, my daughter's at home. She's, she's sick, God. Can you help her? And Jesus said, you know, okay, I'll come by. He said, no, no, you ain't got to come to my house. Because you know, the funny thing, you know, church folk, church folk would say, yeah, come to my house. We need to, <laughs> let me invite everybody over so they can know Jesus came. <laughs> the centurion said, you know what? No, no, don't come to my house. Speak a word. And it shall be done. And Jesus said to him, I have not found so great a faith, not in all of Israel. And here he tells this woman, your faith is great. There's something we can learn from heathens. Maybe, maybe if you get off your front street, maybe you'll find that you're a heathen too. You ain't been a Christian so long you've forgotten. The Bible says from that very hour, she was delivered. So I just want to encourage you, come boldly. I just put that picture up because that's how I feel since she did when she got home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> when she got home, you know, <laughs> that baby had been acting crazy, glory to God. And she got home, that baby was in her right mind. She said, oh, baby! <laughs> Maybe you're here today. Maybe this is you. Maybe y'all didn't think I could do it, did you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told y'all it was going to be about 15 minutes. I'm, I'm at 17 now, so okay, it wasn't 15. <laughs> maybe you find yourself in this story. Maybe, just maybe, if you were keep it real this morning, maybe, just maybe, you find out you're desperate this morning. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can take off your, your, your good old church stuff right now. Yo, I don't want nobody to see my mess stuff right now. You know, maybe, maybe, if, you, you, maybe if you can get your, I don't want to be embarrassed. Like, you, you know what or maybe if you can get off your, I'm mad at God because last time I talked to God, he didn't answer me. Maybe if you can get past that. Are you determined? Have you, had, have you handled it long enough? Two of you said, what you say? 
Lord, help me. Or is it just me? Anybody here need some help? Hallelujah. Anybody need some help? Hallelujah. I mean, help. You're tired of folk judging you. You just need some help. Yeah, you, when you, and every time you talk to church folk, they look at you sideways because you kind of, you know, you a little strange. You know, you know, you've been out in the street. You know, they look at you like, well, what's wrong with you? You know, you know, and so you don't want to come because they, they tell you to go away. And you say, can you just help me? Come on, stand to your feet. Well, if you're here and you need help and you ain't embarrassed and you ain't scared and you know how deep your situation is, you just call, start, start walking down here. We'll, we'll, we'll pray for you this morning. Whatever your stuff is, we, we'll pray for you. We, we don't care. We, we'll pray for you. Oh, praise God. One person's coming right now. Glory to God. We'll pray for you. Glory to, glory to God. Somebody else is coming. We'll pray for you right now. Maybe you, if you know your junk is just, you just need some help. And you want some help, just, just come on down here and get your help. Don't, don't worry about, listen, don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't nobody care about you. Come on down. Anybody else need some help this morning? Anybody else need some help? They just, Lord, help me. Help me, God. Come on, sit down right there. Come on, come on. Just help me, God. You need some help today. Come boldly. Don't be scared. Back in the day, glory to God, when we, when we knew we were poor, we went right down there and got that government cheese. That's right. We weren't too proud and got that powdered milk. I know y'all don't know nothing about that, but I do. I do, I do. I do, I do. I know about that. I know about having the only meat you can afford was, was some chicken. I got so tired of chicken. It was chicken, this chicken, that. Fried chicken for breakfast. Had chicken and gravy. And it was chicken, chicken, chicken. And if you didn't have enough for meat, it was beans. Beans and chicken, chicken and beans. Or just beans and beans. Maybe you don't know. I'm here to tell you today, if you need some help, come get you some help. If your situation is so desperate. We ain't here for front folk today. We, yeah, glory to God. If you're on front street, you're right. You don't need to come down today. Today, we don't need nobody fronting today. You ain't got to, but you got to, I'm down here. And I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need your power. Show me. Hey, maybe today is your day. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'd be afraid to be afraid today. I'm your child. I'm your child. Your child. I'm your child. Hey, hey, Lord. Oh, Lord, hey. Oh Lord, hey. I'm your child. I'm down here. I'm down here. And I need you. I need you. I need you. Come on and show. Show me. I'm your baby boy. Yeah. 